Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Unreal Engine tutorial. Today we're going to be touching base with some of the fundamentals of the engine and talking about event tick and maybe in the process hopefully clearing up some of the uh, uh, let's say bad information related to event tick uh, that, that's been sort of circulating around the, around the place lately. And a good place to start would be, well, um, let's open up a character blueprint here. So I'm just in the regular third person um, the, the, the third person map and I've got the third person character open just with the regular third person code and if we select the where are we um, the defaults the class defaults that's the that's this one up here or even the detail the details panel we see actor tick and by default the every actor is going to have tick enabled and this tick interval per seconds uh, when set to zero it's going to be ticking as fast as possible in every frame uh, essentially we can disable this and stop it from ticking or we could extend the the tick value but i'll get to that in a minute first we have to answer the question what is event tick if we right click on the graph here and type in event tick we find this event here this cute little event tick event incidentally and what this does is uh well in uh, unreal engine an actor uh like an object can be ticking which means it's going to be firing off some code every single rendered frame or at least as frequently as we tell it to this is good for some things it's not good for other things and we'll cover some sort of usage and some some cases uh, going forward for one thing um you can use, uh, so, say, okay, so if we make a branch, say, and uh, we come off this uh, this condition here, there are nodes such as uh, was actor recently rendered, and this will check whether, uh, well, as it says, whether the actor was recently rendered. In other words, whether it's been on screen uh, recently in a tolerance of 0 0.2, uh, which, as we see here, is how many seconds ago that the actor was last rendered. And if we hook this up to event tick here, say, while the actor... If the actor was recently rendered, we can, um, you know, do some code like that. And if it's not, if it's off screen, then we don't have to do code like that. So that's sort of one of those ways that you can, uh, you can optimize for this kind of thing. For example, um, well, tick is typically, I mean, in a, in a sort of basic use case mode used just for basic transformations, you know, moving actors around or doing, um, uh, you know, sort of really simple things like that. It shouldn't be used for heavier operations. For example, the uh, get all actors of class node. Uh, where is it? Get all actors, let's keep typing, <laughs> get all actors of class. See, this is going to check the entire game for every actor that's going to match whichever one that you set here and then give you an array of those actors coming out. You wouldn't want to run this on tick. It's a very, very heavy node. And uh, yeah, it even says, do not use every frame. So yeah, use this with caution. Uh, another one that you might want to avoid is casting. Uh, for example, if we get the player pawn, which you wouldn't do in this active because it is a player pawn, but just for argument's sake, if you get the player pawn and then coming out of here, if we cast to uh, our third person character. So if you were running this on event tick, very, very inefficient uh, having, to, having to cast like this. Instead, uh, what you would rather do is run this on begin play. If I find the begin play node, Here's something that I've, uh, I've really abused in the past. <laughs> if we connect this to begin play, so it's only running once, just as soon as the actor is loaded, and then we can come out of this uh, as third person character, promote it to a variable, call it say char or car for character, and then uh, we have we have this reference here as a uh, as a variable. So now we can use this on event tick because it's already been captured as a as a reference as a variable we can perform operations on this if we wanted to. I mean, I would still caution against that because you're using one blueprint to speak to another blueprint on event tick when really you just use that other blueprints event tick. <laughs> uh, hopefully that sort of made sense. Let's, uh, let's start over here. So some other alternatives to event tick. Actually, before we, before we go on, I should also mention if you're running a code based version of the product of the, of your project using a lot of C++ and uh, actual code files, I've never personally run into any meaningful impact using the C++ event tick. So uh, really there, there, there may not be a lot of um, uh, you know, um, warnings, I guess you call it cautions to, to exercise. You can really just go ham with the C++ tick. Something else that's worth noting, if we go to our project settings, if we go to our all settings here and type in nativization, which we'll find out in uh, blueprints here in packaging, 
blueprint nativization method. If we set this to inclusive, oh, that's not right, uh, exclusive, then I think that's correct. Yeah, select the blueprints only. Or, I mean, you could use inclusive and it would do all of your blueprints, but you don't want to do that. You want to go exclusive and then add uh, add some blueprints here, add some objects to this list. It will convert your blueprint code into native C++ and it'll make it somewhere between 20 and 30% more efficient. So you can get away with doing more on Eventic if you like. As a basic rule of thumb, uh, as you're developing here, what I like to do is uh, sort of test stuff out with Eventic if I need to, if, if it's the type of thing you want to check every frame uh, and then move it into its own function or into its own timer uh, afterwards. So for to that end, let's see what we can do here. So if I go about begin play node again, because I might use this just for reference, one alternative to using tick that's a bit more efficient is a timeline. Because a timeline uh, is its own little uh, weird complicated subroutine that sort of operates on its on its own process. So if we, on eventic, uh, not eventic, I'm sorry, begin play, play from start, and we open up our timeline here, we wanna loop it, the length, let's say one, one second, and now we don't wanna float track. Uh, let me just get rid of that. Where was it? An event track, let's call this event. We can add a key and see so this key isn't gonna be connected to anything. This is where it's going to fire that event. So if we set the time to one, value to one, compile, and then head back to our graph, we have this event here. So if I make a custom, uh, custom event, for example, and we call this uh, tick, just to sort of give a, an example here, and then print string. Actually, I'll uh, we'll give it some color. Um, let's come out of our tick event here into a flip-flop. I want to duplicate this print string with control W and we'll bring down this here and change this from this blue to a red so that we can see it happen on screen. What this uh, flip flop is going to do is alternate between the A and the B outputs. And because I've got these print strings running different colors, we should be able to, to see an example of how this is going to work. So out of this event uh, output here, if we get our tick custom event up here in call function tick, Compile, save it, back in our tutorial map, and I will just make sure that I've got everything set here properly. Then we hit play. So we see in the top left, if I position this in a way that is most visible, so every second is going to be alternating between the blue and the red uh, hello. And in fact, if I come back over here, we'll set our time to something a bit longer, say five seconds for duration. Compile and save that again and hit play. So we just we can see a, a little bit of a list build up. So every one second out of that timeline, it's going to be firing off this, um, uh, these uh, these print strings here and alternating between blue and red. So that's one way that you could use Eventic. And I mean, you can go into the timeline here as well, and we don't have to have this at, at a length of one. So we can go 0 0.2, set our value to 0 0.2. No, that's not right. Value to one, time at 0 0.2 to match up with our timeline. And then when we play again, see now it's, it's running at 0 0.2. So uh, what else can we do? Um, we'll close down a little timeline tab here. So the next thing we'll look at, if I make us some space, the next thing we'll look at is timers. Uh, timer is very handy. You can uh, set and clear uh, timers sort of as we go. Um, uh, so let's right click here, set timer, set timer by event. And we can run this off begin play as well. So uh, let's move it here, begin play, set timer by event. The time here, if we leave this at zero, uh, actually we'll check that, I don't know if it'll run if we leave it at zero. Um, anyway, uh, we'll come out of this event delegate and we want a custom event. I suppose we call this tick two. And we'll just run the same thing. We'll just run our tick one event straight off, the, straight off our tick two. Where is he? tick? And set it to loop. It's very important, so it keeps going. Uh, there's a couple of others here, initial start delay, start delay variance. And we'll compile and save that, then hit play. Yeah, okay, that answers that question. So when we leave our timer at zero, nothing's gonna happen. So let's set it to 0 0.01, and then we'll play. There we go. So now we have effectively an event tick that's gonna fire off uh, our um, tick two event here at the rate that we dictate here in our time value. 0.01 is very, very quick. You can get away with uh, most things. I mean, 
you, you're really probably never going to need a timer that's going to be any shorter than 0 0.05. And 0 0.05 is fine for, um, you know, for, for virtually anything. I'll elaborate on that in a sec. So if we go back into our game, see 0 0.05, if you can see that on screen, what I mean, yeah, like if, if you're ticking any quicker than that, you, you, you probably need a need a, a, another lesson. So uh, what else can we do? There's, let's see, if you have the, I wonder if I have it installed. Uh, delay frames. Uh, no, I don't. If you have the, the extended blueprint library, which is a free download out of the Epic Games launcher, there's a node that'll allow you to delay for a certain number of frames, which is a bit better than using just a regular delay node. Because another way that we could uh, sort of regulate our tick, if we come over here, uh, see with our tick interval set to 0, 0.0, if we delay, just get a simple delay node, delay say 0 0.05 like we were doing before, and then get our tick event here and plug this into to our event tick. Compile, save, back in our map, hit play. So that's ticking extremely quickly. And it's ticking much quicker than than uh, 0 0.05, honestly. At least it feels quicker than, than our timer over here. Anyway, it's worth experimenting with. I would actually caution against using delay nodes. I don't like them. I, th I think there's there's better ways to to do what a delay node does than, than to simply just delay for any amount of real time. And that's the problem with it is that it delays in real time, not in like frame time, which causes problems uh, if you're, uh, for example, trying to, uh, oh, I can't think of an example, but it'll make a difference. Say if you're running the game at a lower frame rate or a higher frame rate, a delay is going to, to have a different sort of length in game terms than it will in uh, than, than it will in, in real time. So I'll caution against doing that with a delay. But like I said, in the extended blueprint library, which I'll leave a link to down in the description of this video, there's a delay node that will delay for a set number of frames, which uh, should help you out a, a little more. The next thing we'll talk about is delta seconds. Delta seconds is how high the engine can count in between frames uh, in terms of a in terms of a float, basically. So how much time is passing between each tick, and we can see what that looks like if um, so. I grab this print string, paste it over here, and if we just plug in our delta seconds into the in string, we see our our float gets converted to a string. We plug it into our event tick, save it, hit play. Uh, okay, um, sorry, we're still running our timer. I'll just make sure that we clear all that up. Save it again, and now we'll hit play. So it'll be a little tricky to see maybe, but what we're looking at here is 0 0.00833. This is the amount of real time that my computer is taking in between frames. So you can see that that's a very, very low number, which which is always good, but obviously we're not really doing much here. We're just, uh, we're just, we're just printing a string out. And what you can do is if you're third with our, um, with our delta seconds here. So yeah, one of the things that we can do with event tick, and this is kind of handy, I don't think a lot of people are that aware of this. So if we just disconnect this here, we can make our delta seconds into a divide. So type in slash, we get a float divided by slash, and we move our delta seconds to the bottom and set a one at the top, and then we go back into our print string, hook this up, compile and save, and then when we play, see we have a frame rate counter Basically, so it's 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 telling you how many frames per second is getting rendered by the uh, by the game, and as you can see, it is locked at sixty. If we bring up our console with the console key and we type in t dot max fps and set this uh, for five hundred, you can see just how fast your computer can do this. And you see mine's sort of fluctuating; it's touching two hundred from time to time. Uh, you might be getting higher values. I mean, I'm screen recording and, and, and recording audio, so maybe it's being sort of like that. If that makes no difference, um, we can sort of unhook that. Things like uh, VSync, for example, is going to lock the frame rate to the refresh rate of your screen. So if we come out of, uh, say, begin play here, get game user settings. And this node is just going to get all of the like the renderer settings, sort of the, yeah, as, as it says, the game local machine settings. Then out of this return value, uh, where is it? Set vsync enabled, and we can disable vsync here. And then when you run this, it will be uh, it will be uncapped, and you can see like that's still that's still returning um, those high values. 
So we'll delete that. Um, well, we can sort of leave that there. This is your makeshift impromptu frame counter. Let's see, what else can we talk about? Okay, so um, we already mentioned, I think I've touched briefly at the start about the start with tick enabled. Um, we can disable this and then there will be no tick. So if we hit play, we got nothing. Um, if I check it and I set the interval to say 0 0.5, and it's going to return a number every 0 0.5 um, seconds. And this is going to affect our frame rate counter because now it's taking <laughs> you know, a lot longer in between in between ticks. So it's going to mess around with the way that that's calculated. But we can leave that at zero and out of our begin play node here, we type in tick enabled. We can set actor tick enabled and there's just a simple checkbox here. So we can run checks uh, like I touched on before, actually, if we, um, we can use a timer for this. So I'll set a custom event, which is our tick timer here and a branch and we can get our was actor recently rendered hook this up to our tick two move this if i to delete that get that out of the way and we'll get our begin play node over here so we can connect it all together so we're going to check every 0.05 seconds we can check every second uh, really it doesn't make that much difference if the actor was recently rendered we can enable tick and if it was not recently rendered we can disable tick so that's just one of those ways it's just a little way that you can optimize sort of a little bit, you know, and it might actually come in handy. I mean, I've used uh, like this or uh, in VRP, I used uh, some similar functionality for the guns. So if, uh, if it's been a second or two since you've dropped them, then it's going to disable certain things such as physics and the ticking. If, if they even tick, I don't think they do. I might have to double check that, but yeah, it's just one of those ways that you can slightly optimize things going forward. And obviously by default, I mean, if you're not using event tick, just uncheck this, there's no reason for it to, um, to, to be enabled if it doesn't need to be. I mean, this uh, this event here, even if there's nothing connected to it, it's still going to fire. There will still be a tick coming out of your actor, even if there is no code there. So be wary of that. It can can affect other things. And once you start to notice your, your frame rate um, taking a dive, event tick is the is the first place that you should be you should be looking. So that about covers it. I think there's everything I wanted to talk about regarding event tick. Um, yeah, so every actor ticks, um, uh, every animation blueprint ticks. If we, we have our third person character here, uh, we'll find out animation blueprint. Every animation blueprint is going to tick as well. Um, if we jump to the event graph, this update animation is going to happen, you know, every frame there's even Delta time here. Um, oh, and speaking of Delta time, if you're in, say, if you have like a function open or something and you need your Delta seconds, you can get world. There it is, get world delta seconds, and that will return uh, the this same, this same float as here. So that's worth knowing too. Uh, anyway, I might uh, leave it there, guys. Thank you for watching this far. If you would like to get in touch with me directly, the easiest way to do that is via Discord. There will be links to all these things in the description below. If you'd like to support the channel, definitely check out my Gumroad store. Uh, you can make a one-time donation via PayPal or become a patron on Patreon. Until the next time, guys, thanks for watching again, and I'll see you in the next one.